death has summoned my brother. Our souls cry out unto God, O Lord, what is man? Is he the creature of dust whose destiny is but to return to the dust from which he came? An ancient sage has taught us the spirit of man, nishmat adam, is ner Adonai, is the lamp of the Lord. Not even the darkness of death can extinguish God's light, which God has kindled in every person's soul. Therefore, we thank God in this solemn hour for all that was deathless in the life of Jerry, which is now revealed to us in all its beauty. For his love that united us in life and which death cannot sever, his companionship, which I've shared all of my life and which continues and will continue through the tenderness of memory for the gifts of his heart and mind which brought us joy and happiness and now have become a precious heritage of the spirit for all of these and for much more we are thankful and we praise God Grant to us, O Lord, the strength of all the generations of our people who in the face of bereavement proclaimed Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yehi Shem Adonai Mevorach. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Adonai Natan. God gave us Jerry for all that was good and that was endearing in his life. We are thankful. Adonai Lakach, God, you have taken, you have called him to yourself. We pray, O oh God, for the courage to make our broken hearts an altar from which we acknowledge your sovereignty and love as we say Yehi Shem Adonai Mavorach may your name be blessed now and forevermore Amen we turn at this time to our tradition, to the Psalms, which we have inherited and which form for us and for Christians too, the format of prayer. Mizmor le David Adonai mi yagor bo holecha mi ishkon bahar kod shecha. Holech tamim ufoel tzedek. Vedover emet bilvavo. Lo ragal al shono lo astal reyu raa. Vecherpa lo nasal krovo. Nivze beinav nim as ve et yere Adonai yechabed. Nishba le ara velo yamir, Kaspo lo natan beneshech, Veshochad al naki lo lakach, O se ele lo yimot le olam. A psalm of David. Do we deserve to enter God's sanctuary? Can we merit a place in the presence of God? Live with integrity and do what is right. Speak the truth without deceit. Have no slander upon your tongue. Do no evil to others. 
Do not mistreat your neighbor. Spurn a contemptible person, but honor those who revere the Lord. Never retract a promise once made, though it may bring you harm. Lend no money at unfair rates and accept no bribe against the innocent. Make these deeds your own, and you shall stand firm forever. From Ecclesiastes, a season is set for everything, a time for every experience under heaven, a time for planting, a time for reaping, a time for keeping and a time for discarding, a time for loving and a time for hating, a time for embracing and a time for refraining, a time for slaying and a time for healing, a time for laughing and a time for weeping, a time for dancing and a time for wailing, a time for birth and a time for death, a time for speaking and a time for silence, a time for seeking and a time for losing. Chaste Adonai ki lo tamnu, the kindness of the Lord has not ended. God's mercy are, mercies are not spent. They are renewed every morning. Adonai is my portion, I say with full heart, and therefore will I hope in God. Adonai is good to those that trust, to the one who seeks God. It is good to wait patiently till rescue comes from the Lord. We learn in Pirkei Avot, the sayings of our fathers, Ezehu Mechubad, who is the one who is honored? Amechabed et habriot, one who honors, loves, and cares for other human beings. We're all destined to die we share it with all who ever lived and all who ever will be. We cry for the dead and do not hide our grief. We do not restrain our mourning, but we remember that continuing sorrow is worse than death. When the dead are at rest, let their memory be a source of peace and be consoled when the soul departs. Let us not seek to understand what is too difficult for us, nor search for what is hidden, nor be preoccupied with what is beyond, for we have been shown more than we can comprehend. As a drop of water in the sea, as a grain of sand on the shore, are our few days in eternity. The good things in life last for a very short time, but a good reputation endures forever. I'd like to call upon Karen, Jerry's oldest. class we have an expectation to keep it 100 and that's what I plan to do today dad loved to make others laugh so if there's something I say that strikes your funny bone please do not be ashamed go ahead and laugh I know dad's spirit will also be laughing with us one of my earliest memories is when I was four or five 
I'd sit on Dad's lap, lay copy on his belly, and he would hum me to sleep. I don't think I ever felt safer. Dad loved all kids, the three of us, of course, and he showed this in many ways. When we were young children, he would put us to bed by playing monster. One by one, we would stand on his shoes and dad would walk us to our bed as monsters. He would also have us take turns every Sunday choosing what the family would do. With a strange child, he would pick up a crying child, put the child on one of his shoulders and look for the child in the opposite direction. Rarely did the child not end up laughing. Of course, when his grandchildren came along, he played the grandpa role to the hilt. When he would visit Indianapolis, he would watch Isaac and Philip while I went to work. One day they had convinced him that of course they were allowed to have chocolate Pop-Tarts to eat and Coca-Cola to drink for breakfast. Of course he gave it to him. He later told me he knew better he just couldn't help himself. I am sorry Loki will not have the pleasure to pull a fast one over Grandpa. One of Dad's ultimate joys was playing games on Halloween. He seemed to have just as much fun as the kids. When there were not enough kids that came around in Mayfield, Dad began to come down to Indianapolis. The first Halloween that he was no longer able to come down, a woman taking her young children trick-or-treating asked me if I had just moved into the house because, she said, a very nice older man used to play game with the kids. I explained the circumstances. Dad's idea of fun was not restricted just to children. He used to organize mystery dinners for the couples club they belonged to. He would spend many nights thinking of how to rhyme the clues. One of Dad's other hobbies was changing the message on his answering machine. Some people would call just to hear the message. Occasionally, he would answer the phone. They would tell him, I don't want to talk to you, I want to hear your message. <laughs> he would laugh, tell him to call again, and then hang up. Dad also loved to tell stories. He would regale us with stories of the family dog, Pepper, and of him being late to school, even though it was just across the street. One of his favorite stories seemed to be about when he played Dive Bomber with Grandpa Phil's autograph record collection. No matter how old Dad was, he would finish the story by saying, that he still felt grandpa's hand on his backside. One way to tell stories is through plays. Dad and I began doing the Punch and Judy puppet shows during the 4th of July festival in Mayfield. After a couple of years of the puppets, we moved on to doing Who's on First from Abbott and Costello. We eventually played all over Eastern Cleveland in just about every community's 4th of July celebration. The showbiz bug hit dad in college. He spent several years of his first career in radio. Once I came along, Grandpa Phil offered dad a sales position at APCO Sales. Dad was also an active member at the Knights of Pythias, holding the office of secretary for several years. When first nominated for the president of the lodge, he politely refused. He told me he was crazy, but not that crazy. However, he must have changed his mind later because he became chancellor commander in 2000. When I began Sunday school, dad became active at Temple Emanuel. Most would remember dad directing traffic before and after Sunday school. While school was in session, Dad could be found changing the signs for the coming week, 
helping to set up a function, or trading puns with Bill Giverman, or joking with Ed Bacha. While Dad was not Orthodox, he was devout. On Erev Shabbos, after dinner, he would go to his poker club. He would say he did that religiously. Shabbos morning would find him at AFCO sales, filling out his weekly reports from his prior week's travels. Because Dad traveled during the week, he was not aware of the illness that pervaded the house. Even though he was not physically home every night, he was always available by phone. Even when I went to college, Dad would send me his weekly schedule of hotels and their phone numbers. Remember, this was before cell phones. Remembering birthdays, anniversaries, etc., was also important to Dad. He always tried to send out a card to immediate family members, cousins, in-laws, and friends. Perhaps Dad made sure he remembered others and made himself available was because of his own childhood experiences. Dad's mother died when he was only four years old. Maids and a stepmother raised him. Found it or not, Dad felt pushed aside. As an adolescent, he began to act out. In today's educational terminology, Dad would have been considered an at-risk at -risk student. Although he may have acted out towards his siblings, Aunt Helen, Uncle Alan, he loved them both very dearly. Grandpa Phil was not going to allow his eldest son to self-destruct. Dad was sent away to a military school in Georgia to recover and shape up, and he did. He overcame his adversities. This school was not his only contact with the military. In 1951, the U.S. government gave Dad an all-expense-paid trip overseas to Korea. During his almost two years' worth of duty there, Dad was awarded six medals. We did not hear many stories from these excursions. He did not like to talk about these years, nor did he appreciate being in the Army. Because of this, growing up, we were not allowed to play with toy guns, not even water guns. During almost every visit to Aunt Helen's, Dad and Uncle David would play cribbage. Dad, I'm sure Uncle David is waiting with a cribbage board already set up. Perhaps in the world to come, you may actually be able to win a few games against Uncle David. Goodbye, Dad, and I love you. Amy Canner, Jerry's middle child. First, I want to say thank you, Karen. You said a lot of very kind words. Um, many, many good thoughts there. And I don't have such a prepared speech. Mine will be a little bit shorter. But I thought I'd speak to many of the values that Dad taught us. For example, every week we got an allowance. Well, in kindergarten it was a quarter, 25 cents a week. And then after that, it would be more and more each year based on what our report cards said and how, how well we did in school would dictate how much our allowance would go up every year, bringing us the, the values of hard work and uh, saving money. And uh, he kept a bank account where we can put, you know, leave our money with him in dad's bank account. That paid good interest too. Um, as Karen said that he on Halloween we had a very popular house. Kids would always come. There would be a line outside the door. And every year it was a different game. Our dad said he had ten different games and he rotated them every year. 
but the motto or wh whatever, the theme of every game that the kids never realized is the greedier you are, the less you get. He would have a big bowl of pennies and he, he would have uh, little bags. This is one of the games little bags and he said okay the, the job is you could take a utensil and there's the utensil there um, and you you can put as much money as you can in the bag do you want to play for 10 seconds or 30 seconds well there's a spoon right there and the kid obviously says 30 seconds so dad removes the spoon and replaces it with a knife this is your utensil for 30 seconds the spoon was for 10 so that's what he would do. Also, on Sundays, um, he, he gave to us, to his kids, every, every other Sunday, each of the three of us could pick where did we want to go? Did we want to see a movie? Did we want to go to the zoo? Do we want to go to the auto museum? Or whatever it is we wanted to do. We each rotated and very fairly he gave us whatever his time to be with us and, and do something. On volunteering, he was the Sunday school cop and volunteered at the synagogue. Although it was a paying job, it was uh, also really more of a volunteer effort. And every Sunday there would always be one kid where mom thought dad was picking him up, dad thought mom was picking him up. And so that kid was left at Sunday school and we would, without any problem, drive him home. He taught us patience. One thing that dad really hated to hear, one phrase that he did not like, was the phrase, I can't wait. What are you going to do? Your only choice is to wait. He didn't like that phrase. Um, he also taught us hu humor, many different, I mean, I definitely got my bad sense of humor. I blame it on my dad. Um, when we were at the restaurant, he would you know, the waitress would bring the check and he said, I didn't order that. And the waitress explains, well, it comes with the meal. Oh, does it go well with ketchup? <laughs> and um, I mean, basically you instill the values on your kids. And what, what do you get? You get back three kids that really, truly love and care about you. I was watching TV around Father's Day and uh, I saw Joe Biden winning the Father of the Year award and he said there's no higher calling in life than to be a good father. Dad you're a good father. What more can someone ask for than three kids that truly love you? Thank you, uh, Karen and Amy. Uh, my earliest memories, <laughs> uh, Jerry uh, was eight years older than I. Um, and uh, as you heard from Karen, uh, he was uh, out of the house in high school in, at military school at Gordon Military Academy in Barnesville, Georgia. Uh, and so um, when I was um, a little older, uh, he was not in the house. And, um, and then uh, he went on to uh, college in Korea and then um, uh, was a DJ in a uh, variety of places, including Coatesville, Pennsylvania, outside of Philadelphia, where Amy now lives, and and um, Coshocton, Ohio, um, and uh, and then he came back, uh, having married Joanne Kay, who um, passed away just a few months ago. Uh, and uh, then uh, was here and worked with my dad, our dad. Um, the last um, 10 years or so, um, Jerry uh, suffered from dementia. 
And um, because uh, Karen lives in Indianapolis, and Amy lives in Philadelphia, and Ron lives in Chicago, um, my sister, our sister, Helen, uh, devoted herself to his care even when she was nursing her husband David Zal who was suffering from brain cancer. She was always there for Jerry and watched over him and represented all of us in his care. As you heard, he was much loved by his lodge and there was a particular member of the lodge Howard Weinstein, whose nickname was Tiny, because he was not tiny. He was very heavy. And uh, many years ago, he fell and got an award of a million dollars from the court. Um, and uh, he squandered the money gambling and my brother Jerry uh, talked to him and convinced him to set up a uh, annuity from which he could uh, live. Um, and uh, when he died, 20% uh, of what was left in the annuity uh, went to Jerry. And that uh, money uh, a significant amount was um, very helpful in these uh, very difficult uh, last years of Jerry's life. You heard, I think, from both Karen and Amy enough, and I'm sure those of you who knew Jerry could relate to all of the things they said. He did not have an easy life. In fact, I think he had a very difficult life. But there were elements of that life that um, were very important to many people. We're thankful to all of you who've come to honor his memory and we're thankful for all of the good that he did through these 86 years. Our father's yard site, our father died 30 years ago at the age of 86. His yard site is this Saturday. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there's some something in there. Um, Jerry learned a lot from our father, and now he is together with him, with his mother, whom he knew only as a baby, and my mother who raised him, and with Grandma Edith, my father's third wife, all of them together in Gan Eden, I'm confident that they are together and that he is being welcomed.
by those who love him. Our God and God of our ancestors, rock and redeemer, a thousand years in your sight are as a passing day, an hour of night. Our generations come and go, but you, O oh God, endure forever. We are always in your hand, in death as in life, trusting in your love and your judgments. Merciful Father, strengthen all those who mourn and particularly Karen, Amy, and Ron. Help us look beyond this moment and help us to realize that death does not destroy the bonds of everlasting love. Sustain us all with the knowledge of our faith that you will not abandon our souls to the grave and not allow your faithful to suffer oblivion. For you, O Lord, have taught us the way of life. Through you, our refuge, we gain eternity. Amen. Please rise for the memorial prayer. El male rachamim shochein bamromim hametzei menucha nechona tachat kanafe ashechina b'malot kedoshim utorim kizohar. Harakia mazhirin et nishmat Yaakov ben Ephraim the Hindu shalach lo lamo began Eden tame and uchato ana bal harachamim hastirehu. Beseiter kenafechalolamim Utsror Bitsror achayim et nishmato Adonai hu nachlato Bianuach Beshalom al mishkavo Venomar Amen O God exalted and full of compassion. Grant perfect peace in your sheltering presence among the holy and the pure. To the soul of Jerry Litovsky who has gone to his eternal home. Master of mercy, we beseech you remember all the worthy and righteous deeds he performed in the land of the living. May his soul be bound up in the bond of life. The Lord is his portion. May he rest in peace. Amen. You may be seated. The family will be sitting Shiva today and tomorrow. Today until 8 o'clock. Tomorrow from 2.30 to 4.30 and 7 to 9 at our sister's home, Helen Samuels, 1614 Chelmsford in Mayfield Heights. And following that on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we'll be sitting at our home on Shaker Boulevard, 13900, in the uh, room 110, reception room, Friday only in the afternoon from 2.30 to 4.30, Wednesday and Thursday from 2.30 to 4.30, and again from 7 to 9.